Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Edgar Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Emergency Services and Disaster Agency for McDonough County. We meet today is Lynette Kell. She's from uh, the Department of Public Health from uh, McDonough County. Um, she's going to start with a statement. Good afternoon. This morning, the McDonough County Health Department received notification that a resident of McDonough County had tested positive for COVID-19. The resident, a male in his 40s, is home and recovering. The resident was treated and tested and treated outside of the county. As of yesterday, we have tested 52 people in McDonough County with 50 being negative and two pending. We continue to update these numbers daily. Today, the Illinois Department of Public Health is reporting 1,465 new cases, 68 new deaths, bringing the total number of cases in Illinois to 17,887 cases, 596 deaths, and 83 counties reporting cases of one or more cases. COVID-19 is widespread, and all communities in Illinois should assume that it is present and take precautions accordingly. The McDonough County Health Department, the McDonough County ESDA, and the McDonough County Board, along with all of our county partners, recognize that this is a holiday weekend and a special time in our faith communities. Spring weather is here, and as difficult as it is, we are asking people to avoid having their traditional Easter services, Easter family gatherings, Easter activities, and continue to stay home. Avoid non-essential travel and limit gatherings to immediate family currently residing in your home. This is an important time in our county and our state. Attend church online, visit family through videos, chats, and phone. We know that the residents of McDonough County are caring and compassionate and want the best for all of our residents. We are asking each resident to do their part to help slow the spread of the virus in our county, our state, and our country. Please stay home. Please abide by the governor's executive order through April 30th. We know you're missing your family and friends, kids miss school, and we all miss our normal routines. We're all in this together. We miss ours too. We're asking we are asking our residents to take the necessary precautions that we have shared through the last several weeks. Do not panic. Do not spread rumors. This will not last forever. It will pass. Please stay home. So with that statement, um, I'll answer a few questions. I saw you did the numbers straight. You've had 52 people tested? Yes. 50 you negative. Have, you have one confirmed case. Yes. Two. And so you have 49. The, the 52 that we reported were tested here in the county. Um, the one confirmed case was not tested here. They were tested outside of the county. But it's a, a county resident? Right. Um, the, the two that are still pending, are they, uh, do they know the person who has tested positive? I mean, is there a possibility they could have gotten it from that person? No, we've conducted all our contact tracing for the individual. Uh, did you mention which facilities are conducting the tests? Is this the health department and uh, the district hospital? The only place that conducts the testing is the providers in the hospital. So um, the health department is not doing any testing. They need a doctor's order to do that. Any other questions? 52 tests so far doesn't sound like very many. Are there what sort of limitations or restrictions are you putting on testing? The Illinois Department of Public Health puts out those guidelines, and so we ask that um, they have to follow those guidelines to do the testing. So um, hospitalized patients um, with respiratory um, conditions who've tested negative for other um, things like influenza and uh, pneumonia, um, people who are symptomatic who are healthcare workers, first responders, and people who are symptomatic who work in uh, congregate settings. Um, and so if they fall into one of those categories, we will test them, but we will also test them for um, other respiratory illnesses first, because it is still flu season and um, allergy and cold season as well. So we rule out more commonly um, common illnesses first before we do the COVID testing. People whose uh, test results came back negative, what sort of things did they end up having? I couldn't say. How prepared do you feel the county is? How many beds are available? Should we get an influx of cases here? 
Well, I'll tell you a little bit about ours, and then I'll let Edgar, because um, he's done an excellent job in preparing the county. But um, from the health department standpoint, we have um, been part of the Emergency Operations Center and have been working with all the county partners for the last several weeks on that, and I'll let Edgar kind of expand on, on what the county has done for preparedness. So one of the things uh, I want to point out is uh, for the testing, the, the hospital is doing a great job in ruling out any other illnesses before we go into the COVID-19. So the COVID-19, we only had the 52 tested with the two pending. However, I will say we have over 100 testing of people, but they got ruled out of all their illnesses like influenza, A and B and all the stuff. So don't get fooled by the number because we're still doing a lot of testing, but we're really now catching some of the common uh, illnesses before we get into the uh, COVID-19 uh, test. That's one thing. Second thing, they, um, we've been working with the, uh, with the hospital to get it uh, to an excellent shape uh, to the point that it's our priority as a county to maintain operability of our hospital. Uh, we have not only local meetings with the hospital, and the hospital has been working probably since last month or earlier than that in getting ready. And we also have regional meetings with uh, surrounding counties to make sure that we have all the capabilities. So there's certain uh, hospitals in our region that don't have the capabilities uh, that our hospital has. So we're already talking about transferring patients and all the stuff. So we have plans in place for all these kind of contingencies. So do you have a number? How many beds do you have available in the county for COVID-19 patients? So the total hospital has over 60 beds and we're working in, in expanding that. Uh, could this be all for COVID-19? Yes, could this be only for uh, somebody that has an accident and go there? So giving you a total number of beds, it might be deceiving because we still have emergencies in the community. We're still having people ha having heart attacks and, and appendicitis and all the stuff. So emergencies will use some of those uh, beds in general, uh, but we have a total of 60 in, in, the, in the county. Are you, are you uh, talking at all about setting up extra beds someplace, say like at the armory or someplace in case you get overwhelmed with them? We we have a pan pandemic plan in place, and we've had one in place for several years, um, and all of that takes into consideration things like sheltering and bed capacity and um, alternative um, hospital spaces and stuff like that. So we have that's always part of the, a plan. So one of the, one of the things that we have is Plan A, the hospital. Plan B, we have all the locations that we can stand up and expand our capacity there. However, they won't have the same capabilities as the hospital because they will have oxygen and uh, suction and all this equipment, the medical equipment that is required. So depending on the level of gravity, we have alternative housing for these uh, older patients. We have Plan C, which is also, so we had several plans in place depending on the level of uh, urgency that these patients would need. So not everybody uh, would need to be at the hospital. Uh, in fact, some patients in other regions in the, in the state, uh, once they get diagnosed, if they, ha if they don't, allow, uh, they don't fall on the, into the uh, at risk, uh, I guess, population, they can just go home and quarantine at their home because they're just having uh, the mild symptoms, the people that require those beds. So we want to we want to isolate those people that require medical attention. And those are the ones that will keep on the, on the hospitals. And ultimately, I think you want to remember that it's not so much the, how many beds we have. If everybody does what we're asking, the stay-at-home order, the only go out if, for essentials, um, to comply with those things, and we know it's hard, but to stick with it through this holiday season, those things are going to reduce the need for even getting to that point. Um, we've taken precautions to be ready if we need that, but. We need people to do their part and stay home and, you know, not go out for family gatherings this weekend, not um, have church services other than online. Those things will mitigate that need for additional beds and things like that. Do you feel people have been following those guidelines? Are you seeing a lot of people kind of ignoring them? Some people have. 
there's always room for improvement. And we would really like to see, you know, it's the weather's nice and we've asked them to stay home for quite a while now. And we know that people are getting antsy and would like to be out. We do too. Um, but we would really like to see that improve greatly. And this weekend's gonna be a very important weekend for that. Do you think going out for a walk is okay? Or are you saying people should just stay in their home? Going out for a walk um, by yourself or with your immediate family who you've been housed with is fine. Um, it's when we're seeing groups of people walking who don't norm either a normal walking group that don't from different homes or um, large groups, things like that, that those are, we understand the exercise is important. We fully support that, but those are um, outside of what we're asking. Yeah, this, is, this is not the time to have uh, flag football or basketball games. This is, this is a time that you need to do some exercise, go ahead and do it. Try to keep it uh, your distance with people. Um, but I have kids at home and they're antsy to get out as well. They were using the roller blades uh, out in the driveway. So just make sure that you do practice safe uh, social distancing. That's just what we're trying to to make sure that people do. Um, but it is, it, th if you can avoid any social gatherings at all, that's what we want. We, I think. This, like Lynette said, is uh, there's room for improvement, and we need to we need to keep doing that. Under your pandemic response plan, I mean, worst case scenario, how many patients could you handle? I don't know that we have a, a number in the plan of how many we would handle. We have plans for how many space we have, and then plans for transferring and things like that. So um, there's not a, an X number. Uh, we've talked about alternative ways to expand those numbers in a, in a pinch and things like that, um, but there's not a, an X number in the plan. Uh, what about equipment, personal protective equipment, ventilators? How are you uh, on that sort of equipment? So we, yeah, we're still waiting for some uh, equipment that we request to the state. As far as uh, personal protection equipment, uh, we do have uh, sufficient on hand for our hospital and our first responders. And as we speak, we're getting some uh, new shipment in, uh, on hand as well. So the, the, the equipment is coming down. It's just not at the speed that we would like. Uh, one of the things um, I just uh, I like to show people, if we have a tornado in our, re in our city, uh, for example, we could reach out to all the surrounding communities to ask for requests for equipment. We don't have that luxury on this kind of event because everybody's getting affected at the same time. So we have to be patient and be conservative with all the equipment that we have and try to conserve as much as possible. One of the things that we have is uh, the community is stepping up and producing this uh, mass that is helping, uh, is helping the general population to be protected and minimizing the use of necessary equipment for the first responders. So that's kind of one of the things that we, we need to emphasize as well, that the, the community is stepping up as well. We've had a lot of donations of the cloth mask, and um, people who want to make those can find the plans for that on the McDonough County Health Department, or on the d uh, hospital's website, um, plans for that. They can then deliver those to the health department. We have a box right inside the vestibule. They can leave those in, and we'll distribute those out as needed. Um, the other thing that the CDC has on their website for people who need a mask when they go out for necessary travel, um, uh, there are two plans on how to make your own homemade, very simple mask to do that. So we ask that people don't use the N95s and things like that that we're trying to gather for the first responders and the healthcare workers for their daily um, use, but save those for people that are on the front lines. No, we're not surprised. Um, it is widespread in the country. Um, and even though we've been testing and those have come up negative, it should be assumed that every county in the state has someone in it um, and act accordingly. So, um, you know, that doesn't mean panic. That means to be precaution, take the precautions and do the stay at home and things like we've asked um, to help us slow that spread of that. Are you worried there will be more? No. I'm not worried that there'll be more. There probably will be. There probably already are. Um, like I said, it, it should be assumed that it's everywhere um, at this point. And so it's just a matter of an official confirmation, but people should assume that, that we have it. Um, 
um, they've already completed that. So, um, and it typically goes, depending on the, the patient, it can go anywhere from two days prior to them showing symptoms up to 14 days. So just. Then any businesses confirmed that this person may have been at that could have been exposed? No, and anybody that's been exposed it, um, has already been contacted. Absolutely. Right. Any, anytime that you have somebody that's condition is not in any health condition is not progressing um, like it should, they should always contact their provider for further guidance. No, like I said, you should, if people are, um, they should assume that it's in the community and there are people that will not show symptoms. Um, those are the people, that's why we encourage the stay at home because people may have it and not know um, and they may go visit um, a loved one who is um, in that high risk group, not intending to spread it, um, but unintentionally passes it on to somebody who can't fight it off. And that's why we ask that, you know, I feel fine. I, it's okay for me to go out, but not for my grandma. Um, it's not me that I'm worried about. I'm worried about unknowingly passing it to someone. Um, and so that's, you know, the testing, um, we encourage the testing where it's necessary, but we don't want to rely on it solely um, as a uh, safe, you know, I'm, I'm okay, therefore it's okay to see grandma. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you have any other? Okay. Alrighty. Well, we thank you guys for coming out today.